first round of the NCAA men's lacrosse tournament rolls along. Day one continues here in New Haven, Connecticut. The Yale Bulldogs out of the Ivy League taking on the St. Joseph's Hawks champions of the NEC. Let's take a look at one half of the bracket. Earlier today, Princeton advanced with the win over BU. They await the winner of our contest here between Yale and St. Joe's in the other half of the bracket. Penn just advanced. Hi, everybody. Alongside Paul Carcaterra, I'm Chris Connor. We're ready. We are ready for this game. Fans here at Reese are ready, too. It's been three years since they've seen playoff lacrosse, and they're going to see it tonight. And this team for Yale, Matt Brandau has been a superstar. I think really over even the last couple of weeks of the season, has really emerged as kind of one of the player of the year candidates. Yeah, Yale has leaders at every level of the field, but their quarterback is exceptional. Matt Brandau, for my money, he's a jack of all trades and a master of all. He can beat you off the dribble. From a dodging perspective, he has elite vision, but I think his best trait is burying the rock. He's so good off the ball. A lot of teams don't account for him finding seams in a defense, Connor. And you know, Coach Shea said it's been even more impressive the season he's had because four of the top six players on the offensive side for Yale are freshmen. So Brandau's been getting it done with a lot of first-year players. For St. Joe's on the other side, they've got a superstar, the nation's leading face-off man, Zach Cole. The ultimate equalizer. Cole's just a shade under 70%. I think he's the most feared face-off specialist in college lacrosse because he's not a one-trick pony with one move. Multiple moves in his back pocket and when he gets going this offense could strike fast and they have an unbelievable balanced attack matt bomer the righty from charlotte north carolina beat you with bull dodging approach and then the two canadians carter page is the finisher levi anderson is complete too man he is a beast on the left side from a scoring and passing perspective taylor ray the head coach for st joe's can't see because of the hat, but he got a haircut this week. We'll let you see how that played itself out when we get going. But look at that six-time NEC coach of the year. This team has come so close with him losing in championship games in the conference tournaments. Now they finally make it this year. Yeah, I think this guy is an exceptional coach. You see him just doing so well in the conference. But I think nationally now, teams and conferences beware when a guy like Taylor Ray and St. Joe's comes to town. They're beating the Big Ten teams like Penn State this year. And here's Andy Shea. Of course, he broke through with the national title back in 2018. Clark, we've seen a resurgence in Ivy Lacrosse this year, but he and the Bulldogs, they set the gold standard, don't they? Absolutely. From a toughness standpoint, Coach Shea is all about the grit. This team is so focused and sharp, and they have May experience. When in 2018, losing in the finals in 2019, and there's a lot of the same cast of characters, guys like Chris Fake on defense and Brian Tevlin at midfield, and we mentioned Matt Brandout. They have big game experience. You got Jack Oak and Luke Eschbach, some seniors on that rope unit as well. And goaltenders, Jared Paquette will get the start for Yale. Jack Starr was a part of that, you know, those championship teams. Like one one. Yeah, now he's backing up Jared Paquette. Paquette won it in a good offseason competition. And then Robbie Seeley on the other side came in about mid-season after the Drexel game, and all he's done was win the NEC tournament most outstanding player. It's been steady. And when you talk to Coach Ray, he's been the force defensively for this team when he became the permanent starter. Top 10 in both goals against average and save percentage. Nick Ramsey will start the game for Yale going up against Zach Cole. And just like that, Cole wins the opening faceoff to himself and we'll get a chance to see that vaunted attack you that you talked about in the open for st joe's first yeah there's levi anderson long lanky lefty canadian that can fill it up michael alexander is checking in and aggressively early tucker brown all conference big left-handed shot Working against a shorty to his right. Wants to get to the middle of the field, just not to do so quite yet. Here's Anderson. 
Looking goal line extended. Trying to muscle his way in. Got his left right I told you, Connor, when I was breaking down tape this week of St. Joe's, Levi Anderson is the truth. He's a two-handed lefty Canadian cradler. You can pound his bottom hand. You can try to play physical with him. He's too long. He's too lanky. He's too skilled around goal line extended. And when Yale decides to show support for this matchup, he'll become a passer. You saw the help from Stuzen coming just too late, right in front of the crease. And Anderson, the senior from Calgary, Western Canada. Coach Ray is from Alberta as well. Getting the first goal of the game. A violation on the faceoff, so now we'll get a chance to see Yale as they set up on the offensive half set. Johnson. Leo Johnson, number six, with the ball at his cross. One of those four freshmen we talked about. We'll see many more than four, by the way, on this offensive side for Yale on the day. Christian Kropp. He's one of the veterans on this team. That's Tevlin. Over to Chris Lyons, a freshman. Here's Sharp. St. Joe's is in a zone. When you talk to Taylor Ray, he said he wants to show zone early to see how Yale responds. Just a tester. They want to at least show it to see how they match up. Tevlin on his horse. Now quickly in front. Ran down too high. Still plenty of time for the Eli's 24 to shoot. Johnson will put it in play. Tried to get into a cutting. Brandau was knocked down, but Yale retains possession. Here's Brandau. Skip pass in front to Tevel. The extra pass to Crop. He shoots. And it was deflected wide by Sealy, so it'll be a fresh 60 for Yale. When you watch Yale on tape, they have the ability to move the ball at hyperspeed. And that's because of Matt Brandau and his leadership. Like, the ball will become hot potato, especially against a St. Joe's zone defense. Drop has it knocked away. Nicely that time by Blondell. And it's causing a turnover, and we go the other way. Listen to this crowd. Got a great St. Joe's contingent here today. Come on, man. Philly sports fans. Love it. Made the trip. About a three and a half hour to four hour trip. Here's Anderson trying to work again on Alexander. You see, Snoozin is right there to help out, paying him a lot of mind. St. Joe's making some adjustments. Ty Doman comes into the game, second midfield line. Anderson just tried to shovel it to the goal. Not a great shot from Anderson. It ends up going the other way. Yeah, Yale yeah, hustles closest to the ball. On a shot when it went out of bounds. That, that was a little questionable to me. I, I thought the St. Joe's player was closer. St. Joe's riding hard. Got the turnover. Lost his footing. It ends up with Yale. Feverish pace here early. But here's Brandau with a full head of steam. Passes it off to Johnson. Slick move and he scores. It's a game of inches. You can question the hustle to the end line all you want. But it is playoff lacrosse. And these are two teams that are battling closest to the ball when it goes out of bounds on a shot. That looked like St. Joe's. But Patrick Heckler does an incredible job at the middle of the field evading that double team to give Matt Brandau and Leo Johnson an opportunity in transition. And when those two are hooking up, Cotter, watch out. Cole. 
Wins it initially, but Susan is there to get possession. He'll go to the goal and shoot just way too high. He's a force. Ten and white. Freshman, long stick midfielder out of Baltimore, Maryland. Doing the Ivies last week. Reminds me of Virginia All-American long stick midfielder Jared Connors. In terms of his length, and his ability to initiate offense with the big stick. High praise indeed. Had a few words for Cole as they exited the field. Now Lions. This is Bragg. It's a huge outside shot. Let's it go. And Sealy gets a piece of that. We know about 45 and White's outside shot. If St. Joe's decides to go zone, keep him on the field. Talk about a zone buster. No one has range like him. Lions. Slide comes inside. Johnson open again. That's two. Freshman to freshman. And normally throughout the season, it's Leo Johnson passing to Chris Lyons. Lyons does a fantastic job of drifting upfield. Look at all the eyeballs and the unsettled. St. Joe's defense, right? St. Joe's right now wants to support that matchup. And Lyons actually takes another step back or two when he's probing that defense. He knows the finisher, Leo Johnson's camped out on the backside. Two goals in under a minute for Yale. Take the lead. First lead of the day. Cole wins it to himself. He shoots. Buckhead is there. Now we get a whistle. Ball goes against Yale. The St. Joe's with the ball in the offensive set. I think it was interference yep. when Paul Kent had the ball. It looked like one of his defenders. Maybe a moving pick there. Up top to Brown. This is Colin Wright, which may call him the party starter. 52. Doesn't have a whole lot of goals on the air. But oftentimes they put the ball in his stick to get everything started, and he's doing that from X. Brown has a big lefty, shoots and scores! That's that left handed rocket from the Furman transfer. We're all nodded up at two. Hammer time! Tucker Brown known with the lefty laser, but they get this opportunity because of the push. That is just a senseless play. You make the stop, Zach Cole comes down, your goalie makes a big save, and then you give it to this offense that can absolutely fill it up. The two-handed lefty outside rip by Tucker Brown, and that is his go-to. Like, he is a stretch-the-defense type of shooter. Bryce DeMuth with the push against the Eli's, giving Brown the opportunity. Look at these two doing battle. Now we'll get a whistle. Interference on Hackler, 26 and white. Well, this, the wings are going to have to muck it up, aren't they, against Zach Cole? They're, They're going to, find to but the problem with Zach Cole is sometimes he wins it so fast to himself that wings could be irrelevant. That's really the only way that Andy Shea and company are going to keep this thing around 50%. Shane Fable now for St. Joe's. Working on the shorty. He shoots outside of the cage. Paul Keck gives chance. Sharp. Knocked away from him, but he regains possession. Now we're going to get a penalty against St. Joe's. Got Sharp in the helmet. That will most likely be a minute slash against St. Joe's. We'll wait for the call, but it's an opportunity now for the Eli's. Brandau. Skip pass over to Sharp. He shoots. Sealy is there. Covers up. Now we'll get the call. Officiating group PJ Colello and the Lutzinger brothers, Ryan and Tim. Matt Kopeck, the guilty party. 
Yeah, he gets sharp right in the head. Imagine officiating with your brother right there is the, the slash. There's no way I could be an official with my two brothers. We'd be arguing the entire time. Imagine the conferences in the middle of the field. Uh, we got to start playing, guys. <laughs> Yale's man up is deadly. That man especially, 45. Leads the nation in extra man goals for a reason. There is nothing he can't do range-wise. There he is. Trying to get a little bit more room now for Brandon. Tofengel shot off the outside of the gate. Sealy gives chase. Hawks got to get this ball across the midfield line. The 62nd mark, they do. Shea and that staff at Yale wanted an offside. He won't get it. Instead, it's a timeout for Coach Taylor Ray. The underdog Hawks in town. Giving Yale all they can handle early. We're going to show you a haircut on the other side. I'll leave it at two. St. Joe's, you know they were NEC runners up in 2015, 16 and 18, but this year they were able to cut down the nets. 14 and 3 on the year, all three losses by one goal park, including an overtime loss to Penn where they pushed the Quakers, who are in the quarterfinals by the way, all the way into the bitter end. But the big story, they've come close so many times in the past, and this year Coach Ray was able to get the win in the NEC championship game over Hobart and they are here and they are doing very well at 2-2 here early and because they won the NEC championship finally oh my wow. word Austin Stazulu who's a fifth year midfielder he promised to be he'd allow him to cut his hair and that's the end result he's a man of his word that is incredible I mean you did your coach is the complete justice <laughs> Oh my gosh. And for he those cleaned who, it up, obviously. Right. For those who don't know, Clark is a barber. A very good barber. He's given us all haircuts at some point in time in his life. There's only one thing you can do after that haircut. It's take it all take off. Take it all off and start There's all nothing off. nothing else you can do. That's so exactly well played, Dench. Austin's for Zula. We tip the cap. Did <laughs> your coach dirty with that haircut. But he kept his word. Now St. Joe's is trying to do... The same thing with this Yale Bulldog team, and they've gotten off to a good start. Back to even strength. Hawks were able to kill off that one minute man down. Right. Nice job by Jack Oaken, staying with him. Now behind the cage. No way angle for Bomer. First time we've mentioned Bomer's name today. Yeah, that's a big boy matchup when he's going against fake 31 in white. He's going to use muscle at goal line extended. Brown got his left free and scores! When you watch Brown on tape, a lot like Thomas Bragg from Yale, he will let it fly, time and room. But this is a gorgeous little fake to the adjacent and gets the defense to just sit for an extra second, which allows the inside of that defense to be wide open. And he knows middle of the field equals pay dirt. Cole kicks it to himself, comes out of there with it. The scary thing about Zach Cole, the face-off specialist, seven in black, he's actually better in the second half. Yeah, it's exactly what Ray said, too. His first face-off of the game, he's under 50%. He's great at adjusting, great at countering. So he gets better as the game progresses. He's got a little rain coming down here in New Haven. We expected this, weather was in the area. No play through rain, no problem. If we do have some lightning, though, we'll have to the game on pause right now it's just a little light rain 
Easy for me to see. Under the cover. The shuttle in front. Stays with St. Joe's and Matt Bowman. Yeah, this is the big boy matchup. It is really difficult to beat Chris Fake around goal line extending because he just uses muscle. Fake stays with him. Bowman rolls though. Shoots. Ken is there. That was a sick move by Bowman. A little twister coming out of that roll. Now Anderson. Ruth checking in for the time being. Look at the strength. Anderson gets in front. Marquette makes the save. Anderson wasn't able to stay out of the crease, so it's Yale ball. Loose ball in the middle of the field. Picked up by Hackler initially. And he loses it back to the Elons. Sharp. Tevin. Behind the Johnson. Got Crop coming out of the box now with the ball in his cross. Sharp nowhere to go with it, but behind to Brandon. Johnson trying to come up field. The short stick matchup. Let's see if he can use his quickness here. Nice job defensively that time. And the ball gets away. How's the rain affecting both or either or both of these teams, Clark, in your mind? Or how will it? Well, normally you'll see passes lower, right? Because your stick bangs out. That one went high, so I don't think anything yet. Just started rain-wise. It's humid, though, right? Like, yeah, it's really humid. Yeah, if it starts pouring, your stick can bang out, meaning the pocket depth will get really, really deep. And shooters oftentimes don't love that. I will say the mesh technology, ten times better than when I was playing. Right? Like, you no, can, you can get a, a true pocket in terms of your depth kind of all weather right Over to brown he's been hot ball kept stones him the other thing that will happen is that humidity will cause both of our glasses to fog up and we'll just be hearing gibberish over the airwaves <laughs> what we're seeing and right now we're seeing a heck of a lacrosse game here early Here's Bragg, looking to just get a little bit of space. Help comes. That left line's open, but he didn't take the shot. Here's Carson Cool, another freshman. Horses from California with a name like that. Beautiful pass inside, and Lions finishes. We talked about Brandau in the open. And his versatility, well, Chris Lyons has shown you some as well. He had an incredible cross-the-field pass to Leo Johnson earlier in this quarter. Now he's just finishing. And Carson Cool does a fantastic job. He's a midfielder who played a lot of attack in high school, so that is where he can operate on a short stick. St. Joe's is so concerned about that matchup, they just show just a little bit. Cool recognizes the man in the middle. Cole's won three in a row coming into this draw. Ramsey this time, though, almost won it to himself in the wing play. Jack Anderson's done a really nice job on the wing and on short stick D midi today. And scoops it up. That's a crusher for Yale because they won the clamp on that one. So when they win the clamp and they can beat Cole at what he does so well, your wing has to come up with that one. Brief shower, it stopped temporarily near Reese. Lockman loses his footing. Now he loses the ball. Can he get it back? Cannot. Hackler comes out of there with it. Hackler's not afraid to generate quick offense. Here he does and scores!
pocket and stick might not be an issue when the rain comes your traction can be Yale shows a quick double team and the difference early in the season was Hackler 26 in white was an offensive midfielder when they moved him to defensive midfield that's exactly what they got transition type offense from defense to offense and he is a sick athlete who can swing it again Cole gets the better of Ramsey he passes off Marquette is there for the stop Fake trying to get the ground ball cannot See that ground ball by Carter Page? <laughs> and then he flipped it over his shoulder. Yeah, no big deal. Not a flare on this St. Joe's team. No way for the sub patterns to come in. That's actually something that Coach Shea talked about when we talked to him about this St. Joe's team. They sub relentlessly. I mean, it is, it's almost, when you got all the 52s and 63s out there, it's hard to keep track of who's on the field at any one time. 63 is an interesting offensive number, right? Right. And how do you hockey hockey numbers? Numbers. It's like all hockey numbers. This is the barbarous Rizula. Physical dodger, can use both his left and his right. Trying to work on Christian Johnson. You can hear the pop, and that's going to draw flags. Yeah, that's going to be a cross check. So right to the head. Rizula will look to take advantage before we get the call. Shoots, Buckhead. Steers it aside. Stays with St. Joe's temporarily, and now we'll get the stoppage. Johnson, yeah, that, that's a good one minute full-time serve, right? You have your hands separated at that width, and to thrust over by the head, that's an easy call. Six saves for Paul Kent already in this game. He may need to make one or two in this full-time penalty because for the face-off guy like Cole, that's dangerous. Got to get the first one to go, though, if you're the Hawks. Good job here, not giving him very many looks. Stuzan loses his footing after making a great stab out of midair. Tevler tracks it down. He gets knocked. Gets back up there, looks for the middle field. This is a dangerous play. And it's going to be a goal. No, the whistle blew first. They'll wave off the goal. And he didn't get it off in time, Clark. I thought he got it off in time, but he Officials, all three of them were right on at the end of this first quarter. Coach Ray, he wants a better explanation, but that's what the call is. It's got to be out of the cross by the time we get to double zeros. Nope. That was a good call. Yeah, really good call by the officials. But if he had possession at zero, because they were extra man, there's no face-off in the second quarter. Because they're extra man, and he possessed the ball at the end of the quarter. That's right. And, and that's probably what Ray wants to get clarification on. 24 seconds left in the man up. After a furious first quarter of lacrosse, Andy Shea with maybe a wry smile there. But his Eli's up by a goal here at home. Chris Carter, Paul Carcaterra with you in New Haven. Handsome Dan's loving that first quarter. Three ties, three lead changes, and Yale with a one-goal lead as we head to the second. Let's take a look at our NCAA tournament brackets. First half, 
You see Princeton with the win earlier today at home against BU. They'll advance to take on the winner of this game in Hempstead next Saturday. Brown, Virginia coming up from Providence. Lars Tiffany's return. Yeah, two seniors for Princeton paving the way. Chris Brown with five assists and goalie Eric Peters, 15 saves. Let's win right here. Richmond had Penn on the ropes. Penn scored late to tie that game to send it into overtime, and then they won it in the extra session. So, you know, coming into this game, that was right before we faced off here. You got to think St. Joe's got a shot. These, one of these teams has a real shot of springing the upset here in the first round, and why not the Hawks? Yeah, I think when you look at Richmond's body of work in terms of their schedule and Beating teams Virginia. they played. Yeah, they, they were ready for that matchup. No question. Just a few handful of seconds left in the man up for St. Joe's. Man up unit just 33rd in the country, so middle of the pack in the country throughout the regular season. Full strength. Yale was able to kill off the unreleasable penalty. That's a big, big job. And then defensively, Stewson again dislodges the ball. They get a procedure call against St. Joe's, so possession to Yale. And look, Penn wins the Ivy, Chris. And this St. Joe's team lost to Penn in overtime just a couple weeks ago. So, so they know they belong on this field with Yale. And it also goes to show they can harness their emotions. Thinking about how emotional of a game that was to play Penn, the big dogs in Philly, and to come out and show that you belong, which they did, and now they know they belong coming into this game, and they're keeping it close. Another freshman, Johnny Kive, out of that midfield. Now behind the brand, down quickly to Brand. Good dodge in the middle of the field, shoots, and that is a blast. Sealy goes down and gets it. Look at this fast break. Beautiful outlet pass. In front. Score! Bomer was the recipient, but Sealy with a beautiful pass from the crease all the way to midfield to get it started. This is an incredible stop by Sealy. Because this isn't just some regular shooter staring you down. This is Thomas Bragg, who likes to shoot high a lot, too. So Sealy trusts his instincts, his form, and throws a dart right up the middle. And Yale just collapses in terms of the way they're playing a fast break. And Bomer recognizes that, cuts behind Fake, who gets caught ball watching. Ramsey. Gets possession, that breaks a string of five in a row for Cole. Now Brandau against Blondo. Over to Johnson. Already a couple of goals on the day for Johnson. Here comes Brown again. Defender slips. That was Johnson. That looked like that, the, the wet. Mesh might have had something to do with that shot. Or his hand placement yeah. in terms of the shaft. I think his hand slipped on the shaft. That shot got away from him, but he's continuing with possession. Lions looking to come upfield. Brad, that pass gets away from him. Over and back turnover, and here come the Hawks. Bowman looking to move quickly. Six turnovers now against Yale. Carter Page a long way out from the goal, not his usual position. Duluth does a nice job of closing the door. He's hammering the hacking. <laughs> Strazula. Looking to dodge, but he'll wait for Tucker Brown to come on. Taking the air out of it a little bit. First time we've seen either team on the offensive half set take the air out of it. Trezula. He's looking to muscle his way in. Paul Kett. He's been good. Both goaltenders have been good today. And it's critical for Paul Kett not to give up a lot of rebounds because Carter Page, the Canadian finisher, hovers around that crease area and he will pick up any loose change and make you pay. 
245. That was Clemens and Bragg. Now Brandau goal line extended. Good movement behind the Johnson. Up to Sharp. Brandau got his defender hung up. Now Blondell comes to meet him. Goal line extended. Crop coming out of the box. Defenders falling down all over the place. Crop will look to pass. Sharp switches to his left and scores. Gorgeous card. Brad Sharp is just a freshman, Connor, but this is a high-end move from a superior athlete who understands where the pressure's coming from, right? They hedge the middle of the field. St. Joe's wants to lock down the middle of the field. Sharp says, okay, I'm going to split you right to left. But incredible awareness out of the freshman all-Ivy midfielder from Cali. Here's a story at the face-off X. Not what you would expect. Ramsey won the last one. Cole trying to win it to himself. Loses his footing, though. Everybody's losing their footing in the middle of the field here. We had a brief rain shower just about 20 minutes ago, and it's having its effect on this game. Two face-off guys in the middle of the field. Cole got possession. Still got a pole on the field for the Hawks. One of the winners on that face-off. Now he'll look to sub out. Teo Domix coming in. Now he's got the ball on his cross. Johnson checking him. He'll use a pick. Beautiful play. Ooh, that one just got away from Page. Wow. <laughs> Zach Cole's at the top of the box, kind of playing cat and mouse with the sub game because that gives an opportunity for St. Joe's to play five on five. And now we're going to get both face off men subbing out to your point, Clark. Cole and Ramsey. And they're saying that the ball did not get all the way to Paquette, so no shot clock reset to 60. That's why we're at 40 right now. Yeah, because of that cat and mouse game, it will open up opportunities for St. Joe's to play five on five with Zach Cole. You just see the way that he's kind of teasing Ramsey with that sub game. William King getting some playing time for the Hawks. Over here, McLaughlin. Lost his footing. And we'll get a timeout. Coach Ray has seen enough of his players slipping and sliding out there. We'll take a timeout with him. Yale up by a goal here in the second. Rain's come back here in New Haven. Just under 10 minutes left to go in this first half. 5-4 Yale on top. Both teams have gotten out and run, run today, haven't they? If you watch Yale, this is what they want to do. And Hackler has had an incredible first half, 26 and white. Starting the transition game for the elusive freshman, Leo Johnson. This time, Hackler takes it himself end to end. But St. Joe's wants to play a little transition as well. Sealy with the stop. Popek up the middle. Bomer with the finish. We've got a dandy here in New Haven, Cotter. Face-offs, as you would expect, a big part of the story, too. And Cole has gotten the better in that category. And once again, on the receiving end, it's Carter Page. That's what Carter Page does so well, isn't it? Just camped out in front of the crease, finding little tiny spaces to operate in. And if I'm Yale, I don't slide early to Colin Wright. 52 and Black is a distributor. He's not a big ball scorer. If you slide to him, he's going to pick you apart with a beautiful pass to the inside, a little jump pass. And Carter Page is an elite Canadian finisher. Money in the bank. 50 goals on the season, Page. 
from Ontario. We mentioned how Ray is from Western Canada, Anderson as well, Paige from Peterborough. Cole wins the faceoff to himself. Will he take a shot? He will. This is a wide. This guy's something, man. He, he can mow you at the faceoff dot. And if you watch him, it, it's not just a clamp, man. He's got counters. It's great on ground balls when it's a 50 50. And as you mentioned earlier, he gets better as the game progresses, meaning you're not going to run away from the St. Joe's team. You're not going to go on very big runs against them because they're going to own the possession battle. All knotted up at five, fifth tie of the game. Stuzer. Just checking Domic. You see Coach Ray on the sideline. He's dumped the hat. Likes that new fresh cut he's got. It's a water repellent. Right. <laughs> this is Faber. right he started the game with a lefty one-on-one -on -one dodge above goal line extended diagonal to where he is on this offensive set so they move the superstar eight and black around because he's got range connor and alexander coming to help out on fable and that left Anderson wide open. You know, we just got done with the PLL draft this past week. Levi Anderson will play in the PLL. Oh, yeah. He'll play in indoor, too, in the ALL. I think he's going to play in both professional leagues because of his box background, but he's figured the field game out. Ramsey tried to get the jump on Cole that time. Couldn't go for the violation. So now another offensive possession for Tucker Brown and company with St. Joe's. Right. Down the alley. He loses his footing, but gets back up quickly. Anderson. Share it, share it, share it. Working on share the ball. Alexander, big time. Big crowd, though. Coming inside. Oh, the shovel inside by Paige. A lot of people think, like, oh, Anderson's using that, that opposite hand when he dodges left hand and he uses the right. But he has two hands on his stick. They're not going to call him for a ward. It's like a chicken wing move where he uses the off hand and swoops by the defender. Here's Bomer, fake, fake. It's beaten by Bomer. That lights up this crowd from Philadelphia. And that's St. Joe's bench. This is a skilled unit. Right there, he throws a nice inside pass, Levi Anderson, to Carter Page. With a little backhand himself. And when you go against Chris Fate, you better bring your big boy pants because you're going to battle above goal line extended. And Bowler takes that challenge and he delivers. We've seen Chris Fate, right? Like when you get above goal line extended, he is going to. Gamering you. Yeah, it's going to be a wrestling match. Yeah. Bowler that time closed the deal. Bowler out of Charlotte Catholic. Cole wins it. The shoot. Marquette goes up to make the stop. Now will Yale look to counter quickly? Johnson. That's Stuzan on the wing. Still has Ramsey, the faceoff man, on the field. Now Ramsey will sub out. Tablin will come in. Brandon. It's a little unsettled. He'll look to take advantage before the substitutions come in. Now he gets it to Tablin. Here comes the cavalry, led by Sharp and Prop. Kicked off by Seeley. 
Stark looked like he was halfway in between what he wanted to do there. And Sears, Johnny on the spot, now punt return. No problem for Clemens. Offside. I thought you were getting offside here, though. We weren't paying attention. Yeah, that was a good call. Didn't have three back. Now Montfort gets a play time for Andy Shea. Over to Johnson against the big fella Bray. Montfort ticking down to six minutes left to go in this first half. St. Joe's with a two goal advantage. Largest of the day. We have been back and forth all night long. Brad. Tevin looking to dodge. Brad now behind the Johnson. Had to go up and get it. Still all kinds of time for Yale to shoot. I feel like we haven't even talked about the shot clock all night. Probing this hot defense. Up top to Montfort. Brad. Nice pass. Tevlin, the second pass to Johnson. Up top, just too much. Ball was tipped, so it's not an over the bay. Ball's still in play. Didn't even realize it. Reich at the time didn't even, or that was actually Carter Page, didn't realize that the ball had been tipped. Thought for sure it was going to be an over the bat. And it ends up with St. Joe's. Todd Bragg hung out here on the defensive end card. Number 45. We'll see if Tucker Brown can take advantage. Yeah, they like Tucker Brown. Not only up top, but in the invert game, too. Got a step. Marquette, though, was there. I thought Brown could have continued his motion upfield to increase his angle. He shot that prematurely. Relentless ride here by the Hawks. And a beautiful job by Montfort to break it. Drop. Can Yale take advantage of the substitution? Brandau will fire wide. Wow. They had the numbers, a little confusion on St. Joe's part defensively. Brandau just missed the target. Two Ivy teams have already advanced to next week's quarterfinals. Penn with the overtime win over Richmond. Princeton, no problem with BU earlier today. Crop shoots wide. Step on Blondell, he shoots and scores! Court, you had a feeling that Brandau knew it from the start. One of the reasons Brandau is such an effective dodger, he doesn't need clean breaks. A lot of guys need space to get their hands free to get that shot off around goal line extended. Blondell's covering him, he's six foot four. It doesn't matter. Matt Brandau shoots through pressure and sticks as well as any attackman in the country. Very underrated strength-wise. So when he gets above goal line extended, it's game on for 41 and White. Eli's cut the deficit in half. Coles won 10 of 13 face-offs, wins this one to himself. Got it free. Of that. Every single time he wins a faceoff, it's hold your breath time as he comes yes. toward the goal. And it looks like he's going to get a lot of shot opportunities. I'll tell you what, though, this unit is so skilled with Cole dominating the faceoff dot and giving these skilled lefty finishers and playmakers. Guys like Levi Anderson. Oh my God. Okay, comes up again. Because we've seen some transition from St. Joe's, but. You just see how comfortable they are in the half field set. Yeah. They get rolling. They are a skilled unit. Andy 
Sheik calling a timeout here as Paul Kess just getting peppered out there, Clark. Think about the last few years for Andy Shea and Yale's. Take a look at Taylor Ray talking about his charges. There are the Eli's in the huddle. Broke through in 2018. You know, they've been pretty good the years leading up to that, a couple of years, Clark, but then finally getting the national championship in 2018. And then following that up with a bid with a berth in the championship game in 2019. Yeah, they proved to be mainstays, and with the success in the DNA of this Yale program, the recruiting was elevated, attracting top lacrosse players nationally. And then 2020, 2021, seasons canceled due to COVID. Everyone but the Ivy was playing in 21. And this was a brutal scenario for any Ivy League lacrosse player to sit and watch the rest of the country continue to play college lacrosse. And Clark, you think about Andy Shea and, you know, having the success and all the momentum that 18 and 19 brought with it, and then you're off for two years, and all the young players that he's had to coach with this team has really done a remarkable job. It's incredible how young this Yale team is, but I will say this. There are some characters from the 2018 team, like Chris Faith and Christian Kropp, and their captain, Brian Tevlin. So they had that core group of leadership that knew what it was like to win a national championship. That was in a locker room with guys like Ben Reeves and Matt Claudette. So they had those core group of leaders. The issue was those core group of leaders were surrounded by guys who had no clue what it was like to play Yale right. Cross. Brown, trying to get that left free. Anderson working on Alexander, vice versa. Brown, he shoots and scores. Tucker Brown knows he's going to have opportunities. With all the attention of Levi Anderson, they're leaving a guy like Jack Gogan out on an island with no slide. The slide is late, but the issue with Tucker Brown, because of his strength, like Matt Brandau, he's getting a shot off with pressure. He's been fantastic in this first half. You know he's going lefty too, right? It doesn't matter. There are certain players that make those little subtle moves when they approach a defender that allows them to get to their strength. And when he gets to their strength and he scores, it's make and take it for a guy like Zach Cole. This is ridiculous. Round three goals on five shots on the day. Cole, now can he keep possession? That's a dangerous pass. Johnson is able to rob it. And it goes right back to the Hawks. Alexander's working on it. Anderson, a little unsettled here. Anderson's going to take advantage. It's a field, and he scores! Sidelines going nuts. They traveled from Philly to New Haven to get pizza and see an upset. That's all they were thinking. But the relentless ride and approach of St. Joe's in the middle of the field has been critical in this first half. Watch this finish by Levi Anderson. Most guys, when they come from behind the cage here and do that backhand shovel shot, almost all the time they shoot high. The instincts and the awareness to fool Paul Kent and everyone else. I mean, how many times have you seen the Lyle Thompson move from behind? 90% of the time, where does it go? It goes high. Yeah. Violation against Ramsey. Largest lead of the game for St. Joe's. Will we get a pole goal? Paul, oh my goodness, Paul Kent robbed him. And now Yale will look to counter quickly. Johnson, beautiful to break down. Check that Lions finishes. How about that for a momentum switch?
pole goal can be momentum or it can be a head scratcher if it doesn't work, right? Because you have the momentum if you're St. Joe's. Why not give your offense, which has been dominant against the Yale defense that doesn't have an answer, more opportunities? Well, Paul Kent makes the save. Johnson with the vision, Lions with the finish. And he was a player who had no fall. And he was a midfielder, and he had to play some attack early in the season just for practice so they could go full field. They wanted him to get into the action in terms of practice reps. He was dominant as an attackman in practice. They had to give him a shot. This time Cole with the violation on the faceoff. Jumped the gun a bit. Brandon. Brandon forces him behind the cage. Now coming back upfield. Gets it to Tevlin. Final minute and a half of what has been an amazing first half of lacrosse here at Restate. Randolph finishes there. Back to a one goal lead for St. Joe's. St. Joe's decides to go zone. The issue is Matt Brandow is not just a dodger. As I featured in the open, he's so good off the ball. And that high crease ability to find a soft spot, right? The one or two steps that he takes upfield to recognize where the pressure isn't, Matt Brandau. All Ivy unanimous. Second leading scorer in the country. Two goals in 27 seconds for the Eli's. Now the deficit is one. Ramsey battling with Cole. Cole kicks it to himself. Over to Page. He loses all over him. You can hear the slapping. Yeah, this Yale defense is aggressive. Chris Fake sets the tone in terms of physicality. And honestly, anger. Yeah. Five second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. And you can see the Hawks are more than content to just let this first half of the clock run down and get one final opportunity in the final 10 seconds. It's going to be Tucker Brown working on Patrick Hackler. Now 15 seconds left to go. Brown will go. Pass gets away that time from Reich. Dangerous situation with the ball in the middle of the field. No one can find it. Now Fake finally does. He fires it downfield. And the siren sounds to end the first half. Everybody at home, take a breath. What a first half of lacrosse we have here. Standing over from the folks who made the trip from Philadelphia, St. Joe's with a large contingent. Extremely pleased with what they've seen here in the first half. St. Joe's in a game of runs, momentum switches, able to carry that one goal lead against the fourth seed. Yeah, Eli's at the half. Coming up to half, we'll look back at the games that have already taken place today, and we'll look forward to the last game tonight, plus four tomorrow. Coming up in the first round of the NCAA lacrosse tournament. St. Joe's leading at the half by a goal. Handsome dance. Not too happy about that. I would think they'd be happy, though, here for all the round in the rain. Still, though, we'd like to see his Eli's come back and get the W in the second half. It is not going to be an easy task, though, as the Hawks have a lot of fight in them on the road. Paul Carcaterra, Chris Cotter with you. That was a fun first half of lacrosse, wasn't it? Absolutely. And we talked all week when we were watching tape on St. Joe's. We knew they would give this Yale defense fits in the half-field offense. I mean, they're just too skilled offensively. For a team like Yale, that's kind of struggled the last few weeks on yeah. that side of the field. You talked about the stars for this game. 
for Yale in the opener, or for St. Joe's rather. How about Tucker Brown with the left hand? Levi Anderson showing his best. Yeah, Tucker Brown with three goals in that first half, just absolutely slinging it, able to play off the pressure, finding the left hand, whether Yale knew was coming or not. These guys are both the dominant left handed finishers that can light up the scoreboard. This one was just pure instincts by Levi Anderson. But for Yale to come back in this game, I think it's all about finding transition opportunities. That's why Patrick Hackler might be the most important player on the afternoon because his ability to go from end to end. He's a short stick defensive midfielder that can strike in transition in the Yale offense. If guys like Leo Johnson, they can respond in bunches if they play more than seven. Final minute and a half of that first half, Garth. Yale was able to pull a little bit of the momentum back. St. Joe's had their largest lead of the game, three goals. You saw it in transition. Chris Lyons scored one of those goals to get it closer here at the break. And so here we stand as we start this second half. Face-offs as we expected. Zach Cole leading the way. It's 14 to 4. The advantage at the face-off dot. But just as I say that, Ramsey wins one to start the second half. Brandau, look at the attention he draws, as he should. Now up top to Shark. Down the alley. Looking for Kroc coming in out of the box, and he finds him. Now to Tevlin. some rain all evening long that has had an effect on this game mostly on the footing both these teams slipping and sliding a little bit there in the first half here's Tevlin what about shooting stick got it behind the cage in front Lions couldn't find the handle ball quickly dislodged back to the Eli's and freshman Leo Johnson says it settled things down a little bit prop Just enough on the shot, and it goes high. Johnson backing up, those days with the Eli's. Plenty of time, still 62 on the shot clock. Susan and Strazula. One of my concerns, Cotter, for this Yale defense, which has been exposed at times the last month, is how much defense they're playing in this game, right? Mm -hmm. Like from a gas standpoint. Face-offs heavily tilted toward the Hawks. Now we get a whistle, we get an in the crease, just slid the crease that time. Footing, causing the turnover. I mentioned the faceoffs heavily tilted toward the Hawks in the first half. Shots as well. Johnson loses a big battle for it. Now gets it back. Lions looking for a cutter. Finds one and Montfort scores. Mont 
Fort gets this opportunity because of a hard fought ground ball. Leo Johnson loses the rock, but Yale knows how big this possession will be to start the second half on the right foot. Lyons spots Montfort, and what a play by Montfort to catch that across his body and to spin all in one motion. The grab across his body, the spin, and the shot location on a righty goal. Perfect. Fourth goal of the year for the sophomore from Syosset. Once again, we are even. This time at nine goals apiece. Tied for the sixth time tonight. Nicholas winning another one. Nicholas Ramsey. Got a bit here in the second half. You know, this is normally Zach Cole territory, right? He dominates the second half. Talk about answering the bell for Nicholas Ramsey. Two in a row here in the second half. Now the field tilted in this direction. Brandau on Blondell. Here comes Kai. Brandau up top to Brad. No thumbs. Quickly shot score line. Lead change of the game, Clark. Yale has scored four in a row. This is Yale's sauce on offense, moving the ball. You watch the number one team in the nation, Maryland. It's all about that next pass, right? They've mastered that. When Yale's at their best, the sixth sense to understand seems in a defense and ball movement. Lions has had a ball game. We're seeing passing from him. We've seen two elite type of next level passes and the instincts and, and seen through the layers of a of a defense but his his calling card has always been finishing the rock which he does but I, i'm seeing the evolution of 44 and white too because he's not just a finisher three and two on the day that kick forward cole can't scoop it up he get a loose ball push here to go to the hunts Substitutions get pulled off. And they'll bring Fable on. So, second midfield unit on with McLaughlin, Fable, and Domi. Fable looking to drive John Johnson. Inside quickly. Page scores! Some guys play by different rules. Like, this guy might be open, this guy might not be open, but then there's corner page rules. Just jam it inside to him. He catches everything. He's got a stick on him. You thought he lost his angle, and like Montfort, he spins to increase his angle back. That guy is so comfortable in front of the cage finishing the rock. Masterful. Look at the placement on that shot, too, in the far corner. No chance for Buckhead. To see both of those goals, though, Montfort and then Page, the awareness to turn, right? While you're losing your angle. Ramsey's found something here in the second half. It's three in a row. Three out of four. And the push in the back here, possession of Cole in that last one. How about that for Brandon? This game's amazing, and the superstars are delivering. Carter Page, Tucker Brown, Levi Anderson on one side of the field. Matt Brandau, first team all Ivy, leads the nation in points per game. Nails that jumper. That shot did not have a ton of mustard on it. What it did have, elite placement. You heard the pipe. 
The left side of the goal on the righty goalie. Matt Brandau once again delivers. Handing out hat tricks in tonight's game like Oprah Winfrey hands out cards. You get one, you get one, <laughs> you get one. We're early in the second half. Violation this time against Ramsey. Kane's always something to keep an eye on. Ramsey loses a stick. Now it's advantage Hawks, and they take advantage. <laughs> Levi Birch, who was a wing on that faceoff, stayed on when Ramsey was out of the play, and he buried the shot. Levi Birch. That's not his 50th no, goal. No, that's his 50th goal of the season. He's having the greatest season for a long stick mini ever. But I will tell you, <laughs> Levi Birch is totally comfortable on the offensive end. He's from Canada. He plays box lacrosse. He's got the hands and deception in tight. Right? That is not typical for a long stick midfielder to be camped out on the lower left side, keep his yeah. shoulders high, and dip his stick low. First deception. goal. First goal of the season for the Western Canadian, Birch. British Columbia, a face-off man for the Elias. That's James Ball wins it. Clark Yale has scored on six of their last eight shots. They're starting to find their rhythm here offensively in the second, end of the first half and into the second half. That's their strength, right? They can strike big. Like this guy. Speaking of big, 45 Bragg gives it off. Inside, Tevlin scores! Great look that time from Brad Short. We're going to need an oxygen mask up here. This is crazy. This pace is just relentless. But you see what Yale is capable of doing when they can solve Zach Cole just a little bit, right? Because then they put this defense on their heels. And they've almost flipped the script. It is hard to play defense. Possession after possession when you're gassed against a team that's really skilled and shares the rock. And that's the captain, Brian Tevlin, part of that 2018 national champion team. There's only one captain on a Yale lacrosse team. He's the guy. You mentioned the time of experience. Four goals in this game in the last 56 seconds. Ball again to take it against Cole. Cole wins it to himself. See, when Yale won three of the first four in the second half, you saw them just putting relentless pressure on the St. Joe's defense. And that's tiring. You saw it all first half when they flipped the script. Joe's player down right in front of the crease. Tucker Brown, this is an unsettled situation though for the Eli's. And they're gonna throw it away. That's a break for the Hawks right there. They need him. He took a hard hit. Good to see him up running off. He's coming off. He was fantastic in that first half. The three goals, the physical brand of 63 in black. To get to his left hand when everyone at Reese Stadium knows he's going lefty, he still yeah. gets there. Tough clear. Picked off. Inside, what a pass! What a pass from Long! Double-digit assists coming into the day, but he's got three on the afternoon. Chris Lyons is known as a goal scorer. Yale gets after St. Joe's in the ride. Ball is loose, 
Look at the pass by the freshman. Freshman to freshman, Yale's found the answer. We are set up for arguably the greatest season of professional lacrosse history. My favorite part about that whole thing was how the player behind Andy Towers couldn't stand it anymore and he had to get up and slam himself into the wall. Oh, Andy Towers will get you jacked up. How about this little guy? He knows who's in the booth calling the game. <laughs> he came here to see you, Connor, the Incredible Hulk. I think he's more of a fan of uh, the game he's seeing on this field tonight. Unbelievable. Hey, coming up, by the way, you'll get a chance to see the number two pick in the PLL draft this past weekend as Virginia takes on Brown following us. Matt Moore, I mean, he's going to fit in seamlessly with the archers when you think about Grant Emens and Willie Manny, Marcus Holman and Tommy Schreiber. Well, guess what? You just got a guy in Matt Moore who can do anything for your offense. He could quarterback, he could play off ball, he could play attack, he could play midfield. And you'll see him tonight at 7.30 up in Providence. Ball with the win on the face of the and score! That's the ultimate juice goal. And look at the Yale bench. Against the number one faceoff man in the country. James Ball wins it and scores. Credit Andy Shea and staff to mix it up a little bit. To give Zach Cole a different look. James Ball is a really good athlete. He beats Cole off the clamp. Cole has not seen Ball. So he sees him for the first time. Ball wins the draw. St. Joe's does not respect him as a shooter and he makes him pay. Largest advantage of the day now for Yale. It's three goals on their home turf. This time Ball just trying to jump it and Cole gets the uh, gets possession on the faceoff. That's big because that's the second violation. Uh, that's big too, the turnover though. So they're not even getting offensive possession out of it. Stewson's all kinds of fired up. And Cool will put it in play for the Elites. On for it. A lot of momentum, a lot of confidence for this Yale team now. Johnson. To Cool and now over Brad. Interested in hearing about that. On for it. Brandow will look to go to work. Rolls back. Seal with the stop. Hawks on the run. Cool defending on that play. Fantastic tonight. 13 saves for Paquette. Rack slows things down a bit. As we get a brief respite from the end to end action we've seen from the opening whistle tonight. What's at stake? A trip to the quarterfinals next Saturday in Hempstead to take on Princeton. Jump shot is high. Shoot for you. Here's Tevin. That 
over the top. Sharp has to pass the Temple. Beautiful job defensively by Blondell, though, knocking it away. Wow, though. St. Joe's plays incredible defense. It would have been a shot clock violation, but they had possession of the ball, right. and then the check by Tablin gives them a, a clean 80. Clean 80. So now this defense, which is tired, having that, that whole Gassed. possession. Gas. Now they got to stay on the field. And what a play by Tablin. Huge effort. A huge effort by Tablin. Great job of anticipation. Winner. Gives it off. Oh, just high. Page knows. Right. Look at his body language. He knows. That was a moment to get a lot of momentum back and dig into this three-goal deficit. Still, though, they have possession. Bomer. Strazula. It's by Stuzan. Now full head of steam. Hope is going to have to come. He shoots and scores! Stu tons of lacrosse under his belt. First team all conference for a reason. Found his shooting stroke this year. I think Yale kind of hints that he was going to throw it up to the point guy there. Carter Page, look at the placement on that. Paul Kett is there just so close. Did you see how he froze the defense? That little freeze. Yale kind of anticipated and hedged that he was going to throw to the right side where Carter Page was camped out. Big scrum in the middle of the field. Picked up by Hackler. Missed the call from the official here on the near side, but that's going to be a turnover. Still in the middle of everything. Ball, the faceoff man eventually gets possession back to Paul Kent. Wild sequence of events. And at the end of the day, of course, it's a close defender, Demuth, who brings the ball across the midfield line. It's possession for Yale. It is critical for Yale to go on a run here because they're up two right now, but they have two faceoff violations. So they get a third, and everyone after that, they're doing time yeah. in the penalty box. And you're going against Zach Cole. So you're going to be trigger shot to begin with. And knowing that if you jump, you're dealing with a man down situation. Lines. Bragg, a fire and score. mixing it up, Connor. When we were here a couple of weeks ago against Harvard, he was hammering the ball from 15 yards high to high. A lot of times outside shooters are scouting. So you counter with some versatility in your stroke. It's the same exact release point that we saw a couple weeks ago against Harvard, but he's shooting low. But right now, this is so interesting right now because as Nicholas Ramsey trots out, he can't be super aggressive against Cole because if he jumps, that'll be the third procedure. And St. Joe's will go an extra man. There you saw it. Cole wins it to himself easily. You got players like Grant now trying to get back into the hole. That's exactly what Yale wants, though. They don't want this, though. Anderson. Ooh, just back down. I thought he might go right to the goal. So Zula, isn't that what Yale wants, though? If Cole's going to win the faceoff, you just got to harass him all the way down the field and force him into a turnover. He's good with the ball, right? Brown, players go crashing down to the ground. Still got a long pull out there on the field for the Hawks. Now, right 
comes on. Back over to Fazula. Physical play. Zod Oaken. Here's Anderson. He'll split on the field. Shoots. Oh, wide. But Bowman will bomb back it up. You see how aggressive he is when he drives with the left hand? He's got two hands on a stick, so he, he's almost like assaulting the defender with his right hand. Right. right. Shoots. Scores! Left by Paquette. Just trickled by him. Connor, you mentioned in the first half that right 52 for St. Joe's kind of starts the offense. He does it with a calmness. Known as a passer, and Yale's deciding this half, we're not going to slide to him. So if you don't slide to him, he's going to go to the rack. We've seen him throughout the course of this game be aggressive, but a lot of times it's aggressive to be a passer, right, when he hit Carter Page in the second quarter. That time he decides to take it to the rack himself. Now Yale going with ball at the face-off X. Boy, the St. Joe's bench thought he went early. Didn't. Instead, the wings gobble it up. Big play by Garcia Torino to get the loose ball. Now it's loose again. Garcia, they call him, battling for it. Big play here. Over the ceiling. Blondell, he'll clear it himself. Gets it to Anderson. Final minute of this third quarter. St. Joe's led by a goal at the half. Now they trail by two. Anderson trying to come up field, field against Alexander. Over to Doman. Here's Faber. Now 15 seconds. Fable on Tevlin. Fable shoots wide. Still on the rebound though. Side of the net. Fake will let it fly. Brandau shoots. Sealy is there though. At the end of the third quarter. Just frenetic activity in this game. That's been the case from the opening whistle. Catch your breath. Two goals, the advantage for Handsome Dan and the Elides. They've worked to forge this advantage. Can they hold it at home and advance to the quarterfinals? Stay tuned. Chris Connor, Paul Clark, and Tara with you in the booth. Let's take a look at the top half of the NCAA lacrosse tournament, the men's tournament bracket. Princeton has already advanced the next weekend's quarterfinal. They await the winner of this game. They'll be playing in Hempstead, number one, Maryland and Vermont. Tomorrow, and then Brown and Virginia coming up next, immediately following our game. Don't forget the NCAA men's lacrosse coverage. It's all weekend long. As we head to the quarterfinals, action begins Saturday, May 21st at noon on ESPNU. Visit NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships, including this championship of this sport right here on Memorial Day. There's Ball again, winning another faceoff. He's won three faceoffs here in the second half. And he scored a goal off one of them. Back up top to Johnson. Quickly over the lines, off not to shoot. Johnson spins in the middle of the field. He'll shoot. See it, saw it all the way. Seven saves for Seeley.
St. Joe's in a little bit of trouble here. They get into the middle of the field, though, on the clear. Could be a chance here. It's a goal here! Birch, that's two goals! His first two goals in the season! What a time to shine! Levi Birch, the lefty, the two monster goals. He's feeling it. St. Joe's is feeling it. You want a pole goal? Give it to the guy who's found pay dirt already. It's May. The belief is there. Levi Birch. You're yep. about as far away as you can be. Victoria, British Columbia. I wonder if his family is here amongst this crowd of Hawks fans. What a moment. Now Cole wins the faceoff. Strazula. To right. Looking to get things started. Eschbach pushing Strazula out. Brown got his left hand free. Puckhead goes down to Robin. That's a fantastic save by Puckhead. If you look at. Carter Page, when he made that move, the sixth sense to feel the back pressure from the defense. And Paulette bails this Yale defense out. A unit from a slide standpoint that is not always in unison. Eli Solid on the clear. Monfort over to Cool. Quickly, Oaken trying to come out, and Bragg comes in. Behind the cage to Brandel. Mondell on him. And a lose it initially, now gets it back. Rolls to his right, got a step, but didn't take the shot. Bragg. Lines with all kinds of time. Just loses it high. Watch Bragg, 45 and white. When he has the ball from the outside, they defend him differently. They're going to pressure. They're going to try to slide in front of him to disrupt his shot. And Lions had an opportunity. Johnson on top. Bragg will fire here. Oh, boy. Scary. Right? Like some guys no. shoot fast. Some guys shoot hard. Some guys shoot hard and fast. I'm worried about the fence back there guarding the side center, but Joe probably spent about $8 million on my head on the to make sure that those bad shots don't go through that fence. <laughs> what a facility, right? Oh, it's Joe amazing. Joe's style across center behind us. Fantastic. State of the art. You see it there. Nothing but love for Joe Side too, and his support for oh. college and professional across both indoor and outdoor in this and country. And international. Yeah, no doubt. Great defensive stand that time by St. Joe's. I mean, this game has so many ebbs and flows to it. Now, can they clear it? This is a tough spot right here. And they can't squeeze it. Is there to pick it off? Now we get a whistle and a flag down. about to get pushed out of bounds he throws a pass in desperation but prior to that Yale is off sides right. that's a possession foul so he's he's in trouble here so he just throws that in desperation prior to that though Yale is off sides Andy Shake can't believe it he wants an explanation I don't think he's happy with what he got it's on the far side right he can't believe it. Because not only did they lose possession, but now they're a man down for 30 seconds. And that might have been an opportunity for Stuzan to come down and generate some quick offense. 
And Andy Shea knows it. Either way, he's got to kill off this 30-second penalty. Watch 63 in black. Tucker Brown, like Thomas Bragg, he's the guy they want time and room to set his feet. He's on the left side. Zula looking for him, can't get it to him. Stuzan is there. Nice catch that time by Bowmer. Now he has it. Brown behind the cage. Bowmer over to Strizula. Even strength. Skip pass. Shot. Wow. That's, That's the look. what he wanted. And he knows it. They were just all even. But Yale had not recovered into a six on six set. Tucker Brown camped out on that left side, right where he wants it. Now the Hawks are sub out. Favor comes on. On foot. All over Favor. That's heaven is there to help out if needed. Behind Anderson, 12 to shoot. That's Bowman. He loses it. Booth, nice job defensively. Now they got to move quickly. Two seconds to shoot. They get a shot off, and it's wide. That's the best scenario for Carter Page in this St. Joe's offense because now they can go back. They had a shot, a little desperation. If it falls, it falls, but now you are allowed your entire team to set up their ride. Under 10 to play here in New Haven. Sheldon clears it. Everything on the line for both these teams. Desperate to get to Hempstead in the quarterfinals next weekend. Kai. Shakes free of his defender. Now to Johnson. Johnson up top to Sharp. Brad coming on the field out of the box. Here he is with a full head of steam. Johnson quickly trying to get in front to flex to Sharp. He'll have a look. This is Matt Brandau time. If I'm Andy Shea, I'm saying let 41 and White handle the ball. He's the quarterback of his team. He's the best decision maker for Yale. He needs to touch in every possession. Here he is, trying to work the pick game with Blondell. In front, Johnson couldn't get a clean shot. 21 to shoot for the Elons. Brandau wanted a new shot clock, 60 seconds anyway, won't get it. Won't get the refresh, Brand. Johnson couldn't handle it, 10 to shoot, cut in front. Oh, Seal is there! Gail said it was a goal. Yeah. We won't even get the reset now. Now we're going to have to get a whistle. Now they say it's a shot clock violation. Gail said it was a goal. Andy Shea and staff upset that Brad Sharp, who had the ball there, wasn't pushed from the rear right. for 30 seconds. Got to put it behind you, though. At least for the time being. We'll take another look at it. So far this quarter, Yale 0 for 7 shooting. They were so good in the third quarter. That was a huge moment in the game. Huge. Because Sharp was pushed. They're down to just a second or two on the shot clock. If they go extra man, it's fresh. They get a new clock and extra man. Paul Kent doesn't get there. Big loose ball here. Run by Stevenson. I look at him run. He's got Kyle open, can't hit him though. And will go the other way. Quickly winner. Anderson. Stewson did a nice job to get back and prevent Anderson from getting to the goal. Fresh 80 for St. Joe's, and they're going to take advantage of it here just to settle things down a little bit. Stuzul comes on. Trailing by three early in this fourth quarter. They've scored a couple of goals to knife into that disadvantage. Bomer. On fake. Collision. He scores! It 
It's a game of inches and a game of critical moments. Yale's losing their minds because when the ball is on the other side of the field, they feel Brad Sharp scored a goal and then after was pushed on this catch from the rear. That would have been 30 seconds in a fresh shot clock. Instead, Bomber plays big boy lacrosse. We're all tied. Midway through the fourth, 15-15. It looked like Yale was going to pull away. They had a three-goal lead at home. Of course, the favorite, the number four seed in this tournament, is going to pull away, but not so fast, Carl. They've got the leadership, the players who can make monster plays in critical spots like Levi Birch. And then Bomer, who's won the physical matchup against Chris Fake, who rarely gets bullied. He's done that multiple times in this contest. And this is why you roll out the top face-off specialist in the country for moments like this. When your season's on the line, you have Zach Cole for this very moment. And it's Ball who wins it. He has done amazing work here in the second half. By my count, he has four face-off wins and a goal in the second half alone. Basically being he's even with Zach Cole. On two violations, too. Yale has two violations, so for James Ball to do this and not be trigger shy and to beat Zach Cole, who has a little bit of house money because of those violations, and Yale not being aggressive, huge by James Ball. Sharp. Thought he was robbed of a goal moments ago. Kind. Got his defender. Ball, he scores! James Ball gives this Yale offense life. And we talk about the freshmen and Chris Lyons and Leo Johnson and Brad Sharp. Don't forget about Johnny Kai. What awareness to dip the stick underneath, away from pressure. Catches, sets his feet like he's going to rip. Defense overextends, buries it. The 12 now is the face-off discrepancy. Ball wins another one. Oh, and he throws it away. Couldn't get it to Johnson. And every possession at this point in this game is absolutely critical. And the crazy thing about face-offs, Chris, it's like not all face-offs are creating equal, right? You're winning 21 to 12, but the momentum is with James Ball, oh. who's finding a way to beat. Zach Cole. Strizula, he's got to get it across the midfield line and does with two seconds to spare. Great ride by Yale. Watching this game, you just cannot help but know that both these teams, blood, sweat, and tears on this field today in Reese Stadium. Everything is being given by both these squads. Unbelievable. Here's Wright. Bomer, nice catch. Now Bomer has Eschbach on. Quick slide from Yale. Bomer wants the rack. Gets by him, shoots, Paquette robs him. 16 saves for Paquette. Now Fink will look to go the other way. Johnson. Johnson gets it to Lyons. Now Eschbach comes off. Oh, he's staying on. Johnson on the far side clears, which means Tevin can come on. Number five to play. Both these teams must be absolutely floored right now. Blondell trying to handle Grand out.
around you every single possession. The ball has to hit 41 and white stick. Matt Brinadell leads the nation in points per game with a lacrosse IQ that is hard to match. We've seen him muscle through defenders. Now we're seeing a shake and a low angle shot that puts Yale up by two. And now, Zach Moore, the NEC Player of the Year, nation's leading faceoff man, is being tested here in the second half by James Ball. He just has his number here in the second half. Gets it to Hackler. Hackler by shoot. He does. Hide. You know what is so crazy about this storyline at the faceoff dot? Zach Cole is better in every game in the second half. Yeah. James Ball has not been the primary faceoff specialist for Yale. He's only taken 28 draws all year. He's been the answer. He's won five of six here in the second half. Anything and everything can happen in this tournament, and it's happening tonight. Like that turnover right there with 416 to play, up two. St. Joe's has to take advantage here because they can't count on taking advantage of the face-off X. It can't be make it, take it for them here in this fourth quarter. Which is the craziest thing ever. If someone told you in the fourth quarter, based on the season, Zach Cole would be going up against a player with less than 30 draws this season. Uh, in a team with two violations already in the half. Go figure. That's why we play, brother. Right. He got free. Now he shoots. Scores! Reich only had six goals coming in this game. He's got two here in the second half. James Ball's late game dominance is being negated by turnovers, sloppy exchanges. You lose the faceoff, you get St. Joe's life. And they've decided to defend 52 in black as a passer. They are not sliding to him. Colin Reich has made them pay. To your point, 19 turnovers on the day for Yale. Can Ball win another one? It's as probable as that might seem. Loose ball, look at a battling for it. This time it's a ring, they got it for St. Joe's. The beautiful job defending on the play to get it right back to Yale. Lions, and he looks a move quickly. Up top to Brandon. Unbelievable defense. Jake Cohen was the one, I believe, who knocked the ball away. Jake Cohen with a 49. Beautiful play. Now three minutes left to play. Yell by a goal. Here's Tevlin. Brandon. Up top. Lions. Check that. That's short. Now over to Kai. Everyone get involved, by the way, for Yale tonight. Tevlin. Sharp. Now behind the Brandon. Back up top. Here's Kyle. He'll look to dodge. Tevlin, he fired he will. Boy, Sealy goes right up to make the save. We saw Brandau running the offense. I think they could have probably killed a little more clock mm -hmm. and allowed him to be the decision maker, the playmaker later in that shot clock. About four seconds to get the ball past the midfield line. Can't do it. Can't do it. Turnover. Yale will look to move quickly. Johnson shoots. Scores! What a turn of events. You've got 20 seconds to clear the ball if you're St. Joe's. If you had 21, you might have tied up this game. Yale was known to pressure ride. Look at the clock. Barely doesn't get across. The quick restart in the ice in the veins. 
by six and white, the freshman. Talk about freshman delivery. Johnny Kai and now Leo Johnson. Zach Cole is the leading face-off man in the country. He leads the country in ground balls per game coming in. He's never taken a bigger face-off in his life than right here. It's Ramsey for Yale. We're going to push. That's going to be a loose ball push against St. Joe's, and it's Yale's ball. They went with Ramsey there. I mean, they are just mixing and matching and not allowing Cole to get in any type of rhythm. It's amazing. It's amazing call by Andy Shea and his coaching staff to do anything and everything they can to get Zach Cole out of his comfort zone, and it has worked beautifully here in this second half. Ball alone won 8 out of 13 draws. Now Tevlin holds. Watching that shot clock wind down. The lead is two. They still have lots of time on that clock and get this thing well under a minute. St. Joseph's got to press out. Got to force a turnover here. Nothing is more important than the ball. If you are Yale, you do not shoot. Lions got an open cage. Instead, Austin backing out. Still 25 seconds, especially with Zach Cole, even though he's not having a huge second half. Lions just running, running for his life. Shea calls a timeout with 16 seconds to shoot. The intensity here is palpable, and it has been since the opening whistle of this game. I mean, it has been back and forth, up and down this field, momentum switches, swings, three goal leads for one team, three goal leads for another team, improbable storylines, Zach Cole getting beaten at the faceoff dot time and time again here in the second half. Just amazing across the board, the game we've seen tonight. The scenario here. That's Taylor Ray, head coach of St. Joe's. He's a defensive specialist. He's gonna have a double scenario. Andy Shea, you have to ask yourself right now if you're Andy Shea. If you decide to shoot and score, there is a chance, even up by three, that you might never touch the ball again. So what do you do late in this shot clock situation? There's 16 left. My feeling is you bleed a little bit more if you let Matt Brandau go to the cage late in the shot clock with like four seconds left. You let him go. You set up a play. Because the bottom line, if you have a violation, St. Joe's is getting the ball. If you score, you go to a faceoff. And we just saw St. Joe's fail on a clear. If you dump it into the corner court, then you can set up your ride. And even if St. Joe's is successful on the clear, you burn a lot of time off that clock. You do. That's the debate. But with everything said and done, Matt Brandau will be involved in this possession. I'd be shocked if he's not. Brown here has been treated to a gem. What a game we have had. Don't forget, Brown and Virginia at the start of the day. I thought that might have been the best game of the day. That's half as good as this game. We got a great nightcap coming. Cool. He's the one with the ball in his cross. Yeah, he can run. Five seconds. Will he take a shot? He does it. It's going to be a violation. That goal won't count. Shot clock violation. Here come the Hawks. Got to score quickly. Got timeouts on the board, and Ray's going to use one right here. They did what I thought they would do with Matt Brandau, right? Late in that shot clock scenario, you go to the rack. Because if you score, you have a three-goal cushion. If you roll the ball out, you're only up by two, and you give them the ball. Right. Just about a second too late for pool. Look right here, shot clock, three, two, one, clearly after. He just didn't have his time. He just didn't have his dodge time proper. And that was interesting to put in Carson Cole's stick, too. Yep. Another freshman. Like, how crazy is that? However, he's the most athletic guy maybe on the team. 
with Brand Sharp. This guy does flips in three game. Like he can do somersaults, flips. He's an incredible athlete. So I get why you want him to be the guy who could escape a double because I thought Taylor Ray would double. Now, you have a lot of options. That's your best overall player. Right there, Levi Anderson. Yes. But today, they've been able to have success in certain matchups with Colin right. Wright. Yep, the second half, he's got two goals. He's the dilemma. They have not slid to him, but he's shown you he can score. There's Tucker Brown, 63, near side. Swazula's going to start it. Don't forget about Carter Page. Swazula. See what Ray has drawn up. Try to get to Bomber. Stuzan will get chase. Stuzan's going to just try and run out this clock. Gets it in the box. And Andy Shea calls his final timeout. 23.3 to go. It looked like the play was working like a charm for Taylor Ray, but unfortunately the pass to Matt Bomer goes wanting. I like how they were attacking at that oh. stage of of the game clock, right? It was right around 30 yeah. seconds, because if you score there, you put your team in a situation with Zach Cole to get another good look. And Bomer was going to step down and have a rip. He was. This is what they're playing for. If he's just joined us for the day, this is the third of four games. They will have the same number four tomorrow. Here's the upper half of the bracket. Maryland plays tomorrow with noon. All these games on ESPNU. Brown and Virginia follows us. Lars Tiffany's return to Providence. You're not going to want to miss that one. Princeton won earlier today. They await the winner of this one in Hempstead next Saturday on ESPNU. You and Anish and Q will be in Hempstead. That's going to be must-see TV. And we'll be watching Brown, Virginia on her way up to Ithaca. That's going to be awesome. No, no doubt. A couple of pies in hand. Stop off and get some pizza for the long road trip. Looking forward to that one tomorrow. There's the athlete again, right? Cool. Splits the double team. Loses the ball, though. Clock is winding down, though. Yell gets it back to Brandau. He won't do anything but try and run this clock out. Inside 10 seconds, throws it up in the air. Crowd here at Reese knows it. Bounces harmlessly out of bounds, and that's it. What a game we were treated to tonight. You gotta tip your cap to the St. Joseph Hawks who came in here and gave the Yale Bulldogs everything they could handle, but in the end, just too much Eli. Unbelievable effort by Taylor Ray, his staff, and his program. They have arrived. You look at this roster, so much talent coming back in 2023. This moment will allow them to grow, reset, and make another run because they have playmakers all over the field. But Andy Shea's team battle-tested with Matt Brandau leading the charge with freshmen all over this field making critical spots, delivering in critical spots. Unbelievable. Coach Shea standing by on the heads. Coach, I mean, I'm glad we gave you a couple of seconds to take a deep breath. Yeah. That's one of the best lacrosse games I think I've ever seen. <laughs> How come we're always in those games that are the best ones you've ever seen? That was, uh, that was a wild ride. Coach, why did you go to James Ball? Well, we felt like we were wearing him down, and James, we think, is very good, and he did a great job there. Um, you know, th there's one guy against our unit, so that's, that's, the way we, that's the way we wanted to do it. But take me through your mindset and your discussions with the other coaches in terms of using Nicholas Ramsey then later as well after James Ball has shown you some success. Like, why? Well, those guys are good teammates, and they trust each other. JB was tired for a little while there, and when Rammer's tired, we're using JB, and, you know, they don't care who, who's out there. They just want to make sure we get the win. You know, one of the things we talked about as the game is progressing, how so many different players on your team are contributing. Kai, Monfort, you know, even Cool at the end, you know, you put the ball in course and Cool's cross at the most critical time of the game. Right. Well, he's one of the fastest guys we got, so we want to make him make him run around and, and uh, try and ice the game. 
Chris Lyons, Leo Johnson, Johnny Kime, Carson Cole. They're all freshmen. Yeah. Like, describe this group of freshmen. It's the best class I've ever had, uh, the most, most impact we've had on the field. So hopefully they continue to grow up. Coach, we appreciate it as always. Thanks a lot. Thank you, guys. Look forward to seeing you in Hempstead. Appreciate it. Thank yep. you. All right. We're going to take a quick break. We're coming back to talk to our player of the game. Yale survives against St. Joe's team. Now they head to Hempstead in the quarters. We'll wrap things up after this. Yale wins 18-16. Connor Clark with you. Clark, you know what you said in the fourth quarter. The ball's got to be in number 41's cross. Four goals, two assists on the night. Every possession, 41 for Yale, has to touch the rock because of the decision-making process. And he's a playmaker. He can beat you off the dodge. He can beat you off the ball movement. And always delivers when the stakes are highest. Four goals and two assists. He was on fire, Potter. Now 97 points on the year. Matt Brandau is our Capital One player of the game. And uh, he joins us right now, Matt. You must be exhausted, but tell me what's going through you in the, in the team's mind in the fourth quarter when St. Joe's just won't go away. Oh, they're a tremendous team, and, and they put up a hell of a uh, sorry, heck of a fight uh, all game. It was it was a really fun one, but I know we just uh, we had the same mentality that we just had to keep chipping away throughout the entire game. And that's kind of what we did and stuck to. You know, Matt, in 2019, when you went to championship weekend, there were times you were the only offensive freshman on the field. There were times you were flanked by four guys on the offensive side of the field tonight. Describe how much faith and patience you have in this group. Oh, I trust them with the world. I trust them with my whole heart. Um, they're an incredible group of guys, and they have worked their absolute tails off to be in this position. It was not given to them. Um, they earned it. They stepped up in a big way when we need them, and they continue to. Johnny Kibe's goal there at the end. That's just an example of a, a first year stepping up and making an incredible play when we need it. So. Matt, now you move on to face Princeton. I know you hadn't thought about it that much, but you probably don't have to think about it that much as well as you know them. Right. They're an incredible team. It's going to be a, a definite battle, and I can't wait to uh, spend another week with my friends getting, getting ready for them. Get yourself an ice bath, my <laughs> friend. Enjoy. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Matt Brandau, he's our Capital One player of the game for his performance tonight. What a performance by both of these squads. And an absolute joy to watch this game, Yale, with the 18 to 16 win. And I know all those fans there in red, those St. Joe's fans that made the trip from Philly, disappointed in the outcome, but they were treated to a heck of a lacrosse game as well. Here's what we got right now. This is the top half of the bracket. It's all set for the, one of your games at Hempstead, Princeton and Yale. Princeton, Yale, a rematch earlier in the season when Yale was victorious, but stick around. Brown, Virginia. Lars Tiffany went to Brown. He coached at Brown. He took that team to championship weekend in 2016. Now he's got two national championships in his pocket, and he's the visitor, the unseated yeah. Virginia up at Brown. They're going to give him a whole hard time there tonight. Coming up next, that's for sure. Don't forget, earlier in the day, two pen outlasted Richmond in overtime. So they advance to Hempstead. Tomorrow, three games, including the game you and I are going to go to right now, Cornell and Ohio State. Can't wait. We're going to have the ESPN app on watching Brown, Virginia. Got a five-hour ride. And tomorrow will be off the charts, too, man. It, I, need, I need a Red Bull. Now. Man, we had fun here tonight. Handsome Dan finally being able to enjoy the evening. Yale with the two-goal win over St. Joe's. We've had two upstarts almost bring the upsets. Will we see one coming up next? Virginia Brown coming up next. Don't go anywhere, folks. Lots more lacrosse. Look at that.